everyone, I'm Cindy Conte for Ring TV, and I've got Mr. Virgil Ortiz Jr. You know, I just said I have never interviewed you, and one, I'm really excited to interview you because you have the same name as my daddy. Oh, yeah? Yeah, well, nice. he's no more, but it's just nice to say my dad's name again. Yeah. And then the second thing, uh, you know, you don't have a name, do you? Do you, do you have a nickname? or? A nickname. No, I don't have a nickname. You don't? No, I don't. Why not? I just, uh, I really need one that, that'll fit me. Uh, right now, I don't think right now is the time. You know, I just, uh, I feel like I have to earn it. It's not something that can just be given or I can just choose. Okay, I feel all like right. Someone else has to give it to me. You know, this is, this is actually one of the things that um, when I talk about you or people talk about you, mm -hmm. you know the one thing that they say? What? It's a consensus. Virgil Ortiz Jr. is a badass dude in the ring. It's true. Yeah, uh, I mean... When you hear that, when I just tell you that, um, you may have been told that, but when you hear that, that many people I have known, boxing media fans, what do you think of that? I mean, I'm not going to say that's going to be your nickname, though. Yeah, I mean, that'd be funny. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, if people say that about me, then that just, it just shows that I'm, I'm doing something right. You know, uh, I don't have to talk crap about people. I just, I let my actions speak for themselves in my fight. Well, you do. Uh, let's see. You're 14 now by way of 14 knockouts. And you've had, this is going to be your fourth fight this year. Mm -hmm. You're very, very busy. Golden Boy has kept you very busy. Um, not many fighters even get to fight two times a year. Yeah. Uh, your last fight, you got to fight at Grand Prairie back home. Yeah. And I remember watching the highlights and just watching your fight. You've been taking veterans out the entire time. They have never been dropped. You're taking them out in six rounds or less. The last one, um, Re Antonio Relentless Orozco. Took him out in the sixth, three, dropped him three times. Tell me about this fight because the first one, I think it was the first round, you kind of got a little excited. What happened there? In the first round, um, I heard him uh, to the body. I, I hit him one time, and I could have sworn that I heard him. He made kind of – I can tell when I heard someone. They do like a certain movement or – <laughs> Yeah, something like that. But I wasn't sure, so I was like, all right, whatever. So then like maybe like five, ten seconds later, hit him again. And this time I saw him turn around, and he went like – so I, oh, I heard him. So that's when I jumped on him. My mistake was I only went for the head. And he just, all he did was duck down and put his hands up. So I'm like, wow, I should have, watching the fight over again, I was like, man, I should have went to the body instead. But then I was like, I'm not going to knock him out in the first round. I mean, this is Antonio Roscoe. He's a tough dude. So I just backed off. You almost did, though. I mean, think about this. Uh, you, are, you, are Jose, or you are Jose Ramirez's sparring partner. Yes. Um, at that time, when he fought Antonio, he, he gave him one hell of a fight. Mm -hmm. But you made it seem so effortless effortless i could not believe you are a headhunter you attack the body with really nasty intentions um and you i'm gonna ask you your out of all of your moves because i'm gonna i want to see if what you say if i get it right mm -hmm. out of all the things in your arsenal which is your favorite what do you find is the most effective body shot okay yeah you know in a lot of your fights your uppercuts are very very effective have you noticed that really mm -hmm. i mean i i think that too, but it could be my setups too as well. I can I can make you run into something that you don't that you think you're blocking something else. But you know I'm not gonna get too much into that. That's that's like my little secret. Yeah. Uh, well, but you know what? You are an all-around fighter. Um, I think the one thing I found very interesting about you in that last fight, you're very humble because usually a fighter will say. I'm ready for a world contention. I'm ready for that world title now since you're 14 0 by way of 14 knockouts. But you said, no, not yet, because I learned a lot in that fight. Um, you still have a lot more learning to do. Why did you say that? You know, um, I'm really tough on myself sometimes. Uh, I felt like that I could have done way better. Uh, but then at the same time, I after the fight, people had to remind me that, you know, dude, you went against Antonio Roscoe. He fought for the title before and all that stuff. And, of course, he was going to give you a hard fight. So I just I put that in my mind. I'm like, well, I guess maybe I didn't do too bad. Maybe I'm still thinking that I have to blow everyone out which I don't have to do, but uh, I mean, at the same time, that's just a mental thing that I have to learn as well. I'm, I'm still learning. That's not, and you are, you are known as um, Robert Garcia has said, you are the best prospect in boxing, not the top. You are the best overall. Mm -hmm. uh, Robert, I mean, um, your old uh, trainer, Joel Diaz, he said, you're strong. You're so strong. You're very smart. You're very powerful. You have a, you have devastating power that People have to be, you, you know, you're going to be, you're putting people on notice. You're in a division, the welterweight division. It's super hot. Yep. You got Manny Pacquiao, mm -hmm. uh, Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford. I know those are the fights. Those are the titles that you want. Um, you're getting the names under your belt. If you were to get a name 
under your belt that's not a title holder just yet, but it's more of a big step up fight, say like maybe Sean Porter, something like a name like that, who would you want? I think I would probably want to fight like uh, Thurman right now. The only okay. thing, the only thing is, you know, they're, they're on kind of politics of this whole boxing thing, so it might be a little while to make that fight. But eventually, these fights will happen, and uh, I'm gonna show out. I'm, I'm gonna show that I'm ready. Ready. Now um, we are sitting here. People might not know this. This is Robert Garcia's new part of the gym. Oh, yeah. So yeah, so we've got to show it. That's why it's still. How long has this been open now? Um. I don't know. When I got here, it was, uh, you know, we were able to train in it. But before I left for my last fight, it wasn't ready yet. They're like, there wasn't even walls yet oh. before I left. So I'm not sure when it was ready. But by the time I got here, it was. You um, you have a great table of fighters here. There's, um, you got great sparring. Oh, yeah. I mean, Jose Ramirez, you know, he's. Okay, let me ask you, because I remember when he moved over here, and he loves training up here. It's, it gets away from the family. Mm -hmm. How do you like training with these guys? Um, do you guys ever talk about your fights and what you guys could have done better? Do you guys critique each other, or do you guys just bust, bust each other's balls? <laughs> um, you know, uh, no pun intended. No, no. <laughs> no, me, me and uh, Jose, you know, we, he, he gives me a lot of advice. Like he, He's giving me more advice than, than anyone has uh, as, as far as the pros. Uh, and it's not just boxing, you know, just financial advice and what to do with my money, how to, you know, invest and stuff and do other stuff that I don't know about. <laughs> but he's, um, you know, like a, he's like a mentor for me and uh, I appreciate him a lot. Well, you guys, um, he's the world champion. He's going to be going to China. Are you going to be able to go to China and support him? Uh, I mean, if he finds me out there, I'll, I'll, I'll go <laughs> to support him for sure. Jose Ramirez, did you hear that? <laughs> Okay, now um, you got this big fight, December 13th, your headline again, Fantasy Springs Resort Casino against, let me make sure I got his name, Brad King Solomon. I know he has one loss on his record. Uh, not that big of a knockout artist, but he's, uh, he's your next fight to get to hopefully contention mode. What do you know about him? I know that he's a 281. Um, he's, he's, not a, he's not a bang type of fighter. You know, he doesn't like to stay inside. And uh, a lot of my fights have been those type of fighters, so... I think that we're going to see how I react to this kind of fighter. A lot of people have been wanting me to fight someone who moves, who doesn't just stay inside. And some people think that I only do good with those type of fighters. So, you know, I'm, for this fight, I'm just, I just want to prove to people that I can fight any type of way. I can adjust when I need to. Um, and they're going to see how I do with uh, that type of fighter. Do people say that you don't box? You, I know that you're much of an inside yeah. fighter. You like to come forward, but do people say that you don't know how to box, really? Yeah, some people say that, you know, I can only fight on the inside. Some people say I don't move my head, which I do. I just, I mean, I've knocked out every person that I fought. I just, if I feel the need to do something, then I'll do it. But if I don't need to do it, then I'm not going to do it. I think maybe why people say you don't box is because you knock everyone out in less than six rounds. So, I mean, hey. And you do it in a very good fashion. The one, I, who was it? I think it was Herrera. Yeah. Uh, wait, is it Herrera? The one that kind of, I mean, you buckled his legs and he looked like he was going to go through the ropes. I think it was him. Yeah. I think most of all your fighters are like that. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, now Virgil, I, the last thing, um, I know you're a very, very talented man. The reason, besides you're a boxer, when I read and saw you play the piano, the guitar, you play by ear, correct? Yeah. When did you first learn that, or when did you first realize I can play any instrument by ear? Um, I think I learned that maybe like when I started picking up the piano, which was after the guitar. Um, and how old was that? Like two years ago. It was like two years ago. Really? Yeah. So did you just go to a piano and just listen to something and just start playing it? Uh, no, okay, so I used to have this app on um on my phone it was like a piano app and i used to play it for at least like nah, nah, yeah. Nah. Oh, yeah. Least, yeah yeah so I, I would always play that a lot but then uh my friend got a piano i'm like man i, so I started playing it. i'm like all right i'm gonna learn the the this yeah. part yeah and that's hard that that took a long time for me to learn because i'm not like a very coordinated person i had to teach that myself but that's funny you're a boxer and you feel you're not coordinated but your yeah. hands it is hard i play piano mm -hmm. i played 15 years years ago but I do not play like you by any means you're like Beethoven compared to me <laughs> and I've taken less have you started taking lessons yet I haven't taken any lessons uh I just you know some people they they learn like with the what's it called the uh, sheet music the sh yeah, I can't you know I can't I can't do that no I can read it but I can't just look at it okay that's 
I can't you, do that. It takes. It takes it, it, I don't know if you learned. Every good dog. Uh, every good boy, every does, good boy fine, does fine. And then and face. face. Yeah. yeah. See. Yeah. Okay. See. It's gonna make me want to play. Um, <laughs> and then lastly, what's the one instrument you want to play that you haven't played yet? Uh, I. I don't know. It's either the violin or the saxophone. Um, <laughs> I mean. Wow. Like the violin. I mean, like you know, that's. But people don't really realize it's a lot of muscle memory. So if you just remember, we're like. If you make your body remember where a note is at, like on a violin where it has no frets, then I think you can, it's, it might be a little easy. Um, I do understand that the violin is probably one of the hardest uh, instruments out there to learn. So I don't know, I, but I, I want to learn the saxophone too. I, I don't think I'm going to stop learning music. No, you shouldn't. No, you shouldn't. Because remember, you are an athlete and anything that um, comes to muscle memory, mm -hmm. what you learn in the ring, it comes naturally when you start throwing punches and setting yeah. up punches. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the notes. It's just going to come right back to you and it will just click. But I can't wait. You're going to be like a one man bandstand over here. Virgil Ortiz. Jr. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we'll make sure you guys tune in to the zone December 13th. Oh, you're, I can't wait to see you in the ring. Maybe a little bit more than six round knockout, maybe seven. Hey, possibly, you know, uh, this guy, he's going he's gonna to survive uh, for sure. But he's also going to make it hard for me to get inside. So you could very well see past six rounds. And then um, I know you are fighting right on the cusp of the, ho of the holidays. I know that uh, we had a nice Thanksgiving. Do you have a message to all your fans and everyone around the world? Uh, I just want to say, uh, you know, I wish everyone a happy holidays from your friend Virgil Ortiz um, on the behalf of uh, my family, the, the entire team. And you know what, just eat some tamales for me. <laughs> we will. That's, yeah. Do you sing yet? Do I sing? Yeah. Oh, I don't. I can't sing. No. You're gonna learn how to sing. I, I can sing by myself. I can't. Not in front of people. I don't have the confidence for that yet. Okay. Well, good luck to you again. All right, guys. I'm Cynthia Conte for Ring TV. See you guys at the fights. Bye, guys.